Hey guys, how to beat developer imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is something I hear about often enough. People ask this question, whether it be on my live streams or personal DMs, etc., etc. So we're going to go over a few bullet points that I think is going to help most of you out. All right, let's start with the first point. No developer in the world knows everything about software development. In fact, no developer in the world knows everything about a particular language, whether it be Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, Python. It's just not possible. The software development world is huge. It's vast. And it's not possible to know everything, especially when you start going even outside the parameters of a particular language, if you look at all the JavaScript frameworks, as an example, or look at all the PHP frameworks or all the Java frameworks, etc., 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 it can be overwhelming because everybody is telling you how great this technology is or this framework is or this language is. And you're like, oh, my gee, I got to learn all this stuff. And then you see these videos on YouTube where they show you a huge list of things that you're supposed to learn. It's just not realistic. It's not true. It's not reality. Uh, this is one of the reasons why people have imposter syndrome because they're like, I don't know all this stuff here. And I should I, I should know all this stuff because I heard some random nerdling tell me that I had to learn this stuff. It's not true. Most technology out there, as I say, you have to learn on a need to nerd basis. It's not something you have to know from the get go. The need to nerd philosophy is my philosophy where it's based on need to know. Basically, you have to know your core tech, your core coding skills and design patterns and refactoring skills. And then from there, uh, all the other peripheral technologies, whether it be frameworks or different languages or even libraries and modules within a language, uh, you learn those based on the needs of the job at the time. And your job as a developer, big, a big part of the job as a developer is to actually do that, is to actually be able to learn new things as you need to on the fly. Let's just look at Python. Python is vast. There's so many modules in Python. It's impossible to know them all. It's not realistic to know them all, and you don't need to know them all. And it's fact, in fact, it's a waste of time to know them all. So do not let this perception that you don't know enough to, to drive imposter syndrome. It's just not a real thing. The next thing that I think drives a lot of imposter syndrome is the fact that people, when you're writing code, it is an error-prone process. Coding is a process of writing code and then having to fix the bugs. Writing code, having to fix the bugs. That's why you have iOS 14.1.2. All those points, all those subversions are just bug fixes for the most part. It's even one of the reasons why you have iOS 14 and Windows 10, because they're fixing problems with previous versions of Windows, previous versions of iOS. What are these problems? These are just errors on the part of the software uh, developers and the software architects in terms of uh, changing, uh, you know, architectural decisions, changing bugs or uh, even infrastructural bugs or uh, uh, finite bugs in the code base. Yeah, sometimes, well, a lot of times code is updated and changed based on changing circumstances, new hardware, uh, new realities of the internet, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of coding is debugging. Debugging is just fixing people's mistakes. So don't let uh, the fact that you're writing bugs into your code, like everybody else in the world, uh, create this fear that you're not good enough, you're not, you're not a good coder. You're, you're, it's just not true. It's just part of the life of being a developer. So again, software development is an error-prone process. Don't let that have a negative impact in terms of your perception of yourself as being a good developer. So the final tip, the lizard brain. This is from my lizard wizard course, links below. Highly recommend it because it's going to teach you how your brain works. You're going to learn about the two operating systems of your brain, one of which controls all your emotions and your autonomic functions. And that lizard brain is why a lot of people have imposter syndrome. You see, the lizard brain has 
a few primary motivations. Three, in fact. You see, think about it from an evolutionary point of view. Go back a couple hundred thousand years ago, and you're living in the jungle, you're walking around, and the number one motivation of the brain is to keep you from getting killed, right? Attacked and killed by predators. So what our lizard brain has evolved to do, because it's, it's such an imperative, it's such a priority, it's constantly scanning for potential threats. And because it's scanning, it's constantly scanning for threats, it's hyper-exaggerating potential threats. Better to exaggerate, magnify a potential threat that turns out to be not to be a threat than to ignore potential threats and then you get killed. So this, we'll fast forward to today, modern culture, most of us are not being killed by predators. Most of us don't have to worry about that about that much at all, if ever. That being said, uh, our brain will start extrapolating other things in our lives as being potential threats. Imposter syndrome is an extension of that. Let me break that down for you. So, uh, po imposter syndrome equals, I'm not good at programming, which equals, people might find out that I'm not good at program programming, which will equal, potentially, I will lose my reputation, which will equal, I will lose my job. Thus, irrational fear. That's how it boils down, really. A part of human nature, again, taught in my Lizard Wizard course, a part of human nature is that uh, because we're social animals and we depend on our uh, environment, people around us, reputation and perceptions uh, uh, of ourselves is very important. If people perceive you to be an incompetent or to be untrustworthy, then there's going to be a problem. It's going to make your life more difficult, right? So uh, that is where uh, the lizard brain feeds into imposter syndrome. It comes from that. So there are things you can do, lizard, wizard specific uh, techniques that I teach that will help you uh, reduce imposter syndrome by quite a bit. And people actually say within a few days, they start feeling uh, less anxiety, etc., etc. So there you go. I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, remember, no coder knows everything. Coding is an error prone process. So don't worry that you make errors. And uh, number three, remember that your lizard brain is in fact artificially exaggerating potential threats. Just think about all the anxieties you've had in your life, all the things that made you nervous, whether it be was a job interview that you eventually got, or a rejection from a job interview, or rejection from asking somebody out, whatever it is. Think about all the anxieties you've had in your life where it, it, it's, it's, it's really, really bothered you, and you're like, oh boy, what's going to happen? Oh. And then time goes by, and nothing happens. That's a clear example of how your lizard brain was exaggerating the potential downside to an event which didn't materialize into anything. So keep that in mind, and this will help a lot with your imposter syndrome.